right? And then Wusser Ma'it, right? Step N. This is letter N, guys. So whenever you see a zigzag water waves, it's, it's letter N. If your your name of your uh, brother, your father, your mother has got an N, <laughs> so it's got a zigzag waves of the river. Ra, once again. So all in all, Wusser Ma'it, Ra, Step N, Ra. This cartouche is from Abu Sombul. Is from the temple of yesterday and of today, inshallah, for tomorrow. Strong is so we get the strength here. We're talking about the strength. Strong in right is raw, right like injustice, <coughs> like righteous, uh -huh. right? So this spells in English strong in right. Your right is strong, mm -hmm. your justice is strong. So, right, strong in right is raw. Right? Step and Ra, chosen of Ra. He is the selected by the sun. Mm -hmm. So this is so romantic, that is, and also very powerful, as you mentioned before. So this is the interpretation in the temples of Abu Sumbul and others. Mm -hmm. Ra Nisi, the second, would like to give himself a title and also a description. He calls himself Falcon King. He is the falcon. By the gods. Once again, I am the I'm the falcon. Mm -hmm. I soar around heaven. I protect the country with my wings. I am strong. I'm fast. I'm piercing vision. Every feature of the falcon is I am the falcon king. Strong bull, because the bulls are strong. They are headlong. They are bashing. So I'm the mm -hmm. strong bull, says Ramesses II, 1200 BC in texts of Abu Sombul. Beloved of right, beloved of the justice, the justice love me. This is amazing how you describe yourself. Protector of Egypt, he calls himself. Mm -hmm. And he who curbs the foreign lands, because the foreign lands wants to invade Egypt. No, mm -hmm. with Ramesses, I'm there to protect the country. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Wow. <laughs> that is a very strong message. <laughs> yeah. This is the idea of temples in ancient Egypt. I'm trying to tell you that... Everything has a story behind oh it. Oh, yes. And I'm happy you mentioned this sentence, because yesterday when we were mm. talking about the focusing of the sun and the filtration of the sun rays, I was telling them nothing happened haphazardly. Of course. In ancient Egypt, it was not like Malaysia, it was not like never mind. No, 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 no. Everything, Everything was planned Everything very planned. intricately. Mm. Do you remember when you looked at the facade of the temple, yeah. where the four huge colossal, you know, stuff? Those colossi, three of them exist. The fourth is destroyed. Mm -hmm. But that was destroyed in the ancient times as well. What? How, how it was it? It was actually, they said it was an earth movement. Mm. And that's why it was never restored, because a part of the head only exists in front of the pedestal of the statue. Mm. But I would like people, when they look once again at the facade, to notice something that people don't notice. Mm. You know what? The small statues beside the legs and between the legs of the king. Mm. Who are they? I mean, we know about the big guy. The big guy is Ramesses. Mm. But what about those small characters? On the facade of the temple, Ramesses decides to put, do you remember, I don't know how old are you girls, but in the past, in feasts, our parents used to take us and they used to take the feast picture, the mm. feast photo where the family is going to gather at the studio and we will take a picture and we'll put it at home on the walls and that will be the feast picture. We will wear our swankiest outfits. Some people still do that, like yeah. in the holidays. Exactly. Even nowadays during Christmas, for example, the family exactly. gathers and they take they pictures. They would take pictures, mm. but it was like where we were kids and we were you wearing had to wear suits the best and bow ties yeah. <laughs> and everything and we go yeah. and we stand like that. It was excellent. Mm. That is exactly the same idea of Ramesses. He's putting his family with him. Three statues of what you see when you look at the facade yeah. is for his beloved wife, Nefer Eri, not Nefer Tari. There is no A in the name of this lady. We are pronouncing her name wrongly. Oh. There is no Ari. Oh, uh, oh. There is no Nefer Tari. Actually, you said that time we are mentioning all the names <laughs> wrong. <laughs> no. like we are correcting stuff. Mm. So Nefer Eri. Because if you say Nefertari, it doesn't mean anything. But Nefert is beautiful lady, mm. the, the feminine. It, t, the T is here for femininity. Nefert, Nefert is beautiful. So Nefert, t, that's, that's a word. Not Tari. Mm -hmm. So Nefert, and stop, and make a pose. Mm. 
Neferta, the beautiful lady, the beautiful female. Mm. And then Eri. And Eri mm. is the exaggeration of Nefert. So she is the most beautiful of very them all. Very beautiful. She's the very, very, very beautiful. Mm. She's the most beautiful of them all. This is exactly the same name that you give the ladies in the villages today. We have girls named Halawitum. Mm. Yeah. Well, Halawitum oh. in Arabic means <laughs> the <laughs> most <laughs> sweetest, the most beautiful of them all. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, oh yes, we true. still give this name, and that's history, it's guys. Quite different, though, <laughs> than Nefert Eri, but <laughs> as a matter of fact, Nefert Eri exactly means halawitum, mm. and the reason for that is that I'm trying to tell you here that history in this country never dies. Mm. This history repeats, repeats itself that. every yeah. single minute. Also, he mentions his mother. Oh. He puts his mother in the statues, in the facade of the temple. It's very interesting that women have a very strong role yeah. in ancient yes. Egypt, like oh, yes. women, uh, the mothers and the mothers. wives, oh, exam mothers, uh, exa uh, especially also the wives. The wives uh, as well. Uh, they were oh, very yes. much mm. recognized in but ancient look Egypt and very respected. Guy. Very highly respected. Well said. Mm. A message to all men of Nowadays. the Arab Republic of Egypt. Mm. Please do. Please <laughs> listen. Ramesses II, in his, the facade of his amazing temple, mm. mentions his wife or actually ordered the carving of the statues of his wife three times. So he repeats Nefertiri three statues. Mm. His mother, two statues. Mm. Now I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good <laughs> message. Well, I, I'm, I'm not sure. We're <laughs> I'm not rather trying <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm uh, rather you know. the opposite, but uh, we are cool here. We're not trying cool. to say. <laughs> Let's ask you something. Uh, Ramesses the second uh, did have the other wives than Nefer yes. uh, Tiri. Yes. Uh, why did the uh, did she have uh, the only uh, temple with him? Mm -hmm. She was the only one uh, clear in the temple. Yeah. And let why? me add to this What's amazing uh, piece special of special about his relationship. Yeah, let, with let me add to uh, this Nefertiri. amazing piece of info is that he is one of two kings all through our history who ordered the carving of a temple for his wife. Why? I mean, Hatib the third order oh. for Queen T in Nubia and Ramesses in Abu Sumbh. Mm. Carving. Mm. In ancient Egypt, we have something called the principal wife. So your husband will be married to I don't know how many. But he's got you are the main. He's got his harem, but you are the main one. You are the principal one. You are the one who's going to be depicted mm. in the temples and the tombs. And you're the yeah. one that goes to the parties. <laughs> <and> <laughs> exactly. You are the cool guy. And amazingly enough, he was married to 13. Wow. Oh in one God. of the studies it was mentioned and he brought 48 daughters and 52 sons wow so <laughs> we're talking 100 here's another message to the Egyptians. no we don't want to <laughs> deliver this message wow. Mr. no i mean don't do this <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the message what, what were you thinking yeah. <laughs> okay so here is very important business we are talking about here. This is a family man. He is definitely a family man with that number. Very big family, <laughs> very family man. man. Yeah. But he also mentions his daughters. Yeah. We, uh, we have a beautiful, cute daughter of, of his called Bint Annet. And Bint is a hieroglyphic word. Bint is a noun. But let me tell you once again about this business of when they moved the temple. Mm -hmm. 330,000 tons. Wow. of stone was cut in one year mm. started in 1965 the cutting and it ended in 1966 it took four and a half years to finish the whole amazing engineering amazing feat of engineering of moving the temple 64 meters above its origin. original level you don't see it today you don't mm. see the original place mm. of the temple mm. it was covered in the water of the Nasser Lake 19 monuments were saved mm. wow. 19 one nine but the rest unfortunately is under the water today mm. uh, do we know how long it took to actually carve out this temple oh back yes, in ancient egypt oh yes because you know those guys would document the day of the summer the day of the winter and so on interestingly enough we would notice an amazing thing happening in the movement that it cost 40 million u.s dollars mm. in the 60s of last century that's an amazing astronomical figure wow and it took it, this is the temple of four. 40 countries, four zero, 40 million, <laughs> four statues on the facade, four statues inside the sanctuary holy of holies. Mm. Hmm? Four and a half years it took to move. 
they moved it 64 meters above its original level. <laughs> Amazing for and interesting. Mm. And finally, I will tell you a scene that we cannot pass Abu Sambal without mentioning in the temple of his wife, not mm. in his temple, in the temple of his wife. A scene of the king in the middle of two deities. Those two deities are the deity of good and look here very quickly right there mm. very important scene that is that's in Nefertiri's temple not in the main one mm. in the second one this is Ramesses the crown right over his head normal and classic nothing is amazingly unique about that yeah. but this is what's unique Horus the falcon with his nemesis set those guys are enemies this guy, Seth, killed this guy's father. This guy is the avenger. He avenges. He actually is avenging the father's killing by trying to kill this guy. How come the two enemies... It seems like he is uh, trying to act as the justice symbol. Here you go. Symbol. Thank you. Mr. Bassem, it's always a pleasure uh, to listen to your uh, very unique... I still uh, have so uh, many story. questions. Yeah, uh, and really of course we'll continue, continue our questions in the next episode. But now it's time for some light uh, news from around the globe with Nahla.